Welcome back to McGrathematics. We're starting off today's lesson with a pretty challenging flashback question from the 2008 HSC. Uh, we have a sector with radius r and angle theta, where theta is between 0 and 360. Arc length is 10 pi on 3. Part i for two marks show that r is greater than or equal to 5 thirds. Okay, if you're feeling confident, by all means, hit pause and try this question by yourself. But part I has got a bit of a trick to it that um, not many people will see the first time they try this. Let's have a look. Let's make some room. So we have an arc length. So a good place to start would probably be with our arc length formula, L equals R theta. Now we know the arc length from the picture is 10 pi on 3. However, we don't know what the radius or the angle is. Uh, all we know is that the angle is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation over on the right here. We're going to rearrange to make theta the subject because then we know that will be between 0 and 2 pi and we'll have an inequality and we can see the target for the question is an inequality. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by r to get theta equal to 10 pi over 3r. Now this is an expression for theta, so this must be between 0 and 2 pi. So we'll take our inequality from the question and we'll substitute the value of theta as 10 pi over 3r. Now we can simplify this inequality by multiplying all three parts by 3r. And we know that the signs are not going to turn around because r has to be positive because it's a length. So it can't be negative. So multiplying by 3r gives us 0 less than or equal to 10 pi less than or equal to 6 pi r. We can kind of ignore the 0 for now because uh, these two right here are all we need to get the target for two marks. We're going to divide both sides by 6 pi to get 10 pi over 6 pi is less than or equal to r. If we simplify 10 pi over 6 pi, we'll get 5 over 3. So we'll swap the sides around and we get r is greater than or equal to 5 over 3. Okay, so that trick there of rearranging for theta and using the info from the question is something that um, surprised me the first time I tried this question. Now we can try part 2, which is calculate the area of the sector when r is equal to 4. So this is the areas of a sector formula that we've looked at previously in the course. So to find the area, we need an r, which the question gave us, and we need a theta. Now the question didn't give us theta, but what we can do is go back to our arc length formula. We know what the arc length is, and we know that now r is equal to 4. So we can use this formula to solve for theta to then answer the question by finding the area. So we'll set the arc length equal to 10 pi on 3. We'll set the radius equal to 4. Now just divide both sides by 4 and we get theta is equal to 10 pi over 3 times 4, which is 12. This will simplify to 5 pi over 6. So there is our value of the angle here, theta. So now we can apply our area formula and do half times 4 squared times 5 pi on 6. This works out to give us an area of about 20 pi over 3. Uh, that'd be square units because it's an area. So there you go, well done if you got some of those marks. Uh, but like I said, a pretty challenging question. All right, for our final lesson in Year 11 Advanced Math, today we are looking at variance. So to start off, let's talk about what variance actually is. So variance and uh, what it's linked to, it's called standard deviation, are two things that measure the spread of a data set or a probability function. What that means is um, the greater your data set is spread out, so the more your outcomes vary, uh, the larger your variance and standard deviation are going to be. Standard deviation is kind of like the average distance between all of your scores and the mean. It's not exactly that, it's a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. All you really need to know for today is that it measures spread and how to calculate it, which is what we're focusing on today. So standard deviation, our symbol for that is this Greek letter called sigma, and it's equal to the square root of the variance. So today to find standard deviation, we'll be finding the variance and then we'll be taking the square root. Okay, to calculate variance, we're gonna be applying a formula, which is looking like this. So variance of X is equal to expectation of X squared, take away expectation of X squared. So we looked at in the last lesson, how to find the expected value or the mean as we call it. So we're going to be applying a um, similar but slightly different formula to find variance. Luckily, this fact here is on the mathematics reference sheet if you are feeling forgetful. And keep in mind that instead of writing expected value of x, they can write mu because it's the mean. Okay, Expected value and mean are the same thing in terms of a probability function. 
All right, let's have a look at how we use this formula to find the variance of a probability function. And once we do a few examples, hopefully you'll start to follow the pattern and um, get some confidence. Okay, here's our first example. We're going to calculate the variance and then we will calculate the standard deviation of this probability distribution. Okay, we've got our outcomes across the top and on the bottom are our probabilities. All right, so first step is to find the expected value, AKA the mean. Okay, from last video, we take our outcomes, we multiply them by their probabilities, and then we add all the results. So here's our calculation, outcomes multiplied by probabilities, and then we sum them all together. Putting this through a calculator gets us a value of about 7.01. Now the next step in the formula says to find expected value of X squared. What that means is we are going to repeat this process of finding the expected value. However, instead of using our outcomes from the tables, the 1, 4, 7, 9, 10, we are actually going to square these values. So here is our calculation, okay? This is what the expected value of our outcome squared looks like. The probabilities are still remaining the same. However, our outcomes, the X values, like I said, are all being squared. All right, this calculation gets us an answer of 56.63. So we have our expected value and we have our expected values of X squared. Now we apply our formula, which is that variance is expected value of X squared, take away expected value squared. So all we need to do is 56.63, take away 7.01 squared. This will calculate our variance. We get a value of around 7.4899. All right, so there is our variance value. Now, as we said in the notes, uh, standard deviation, which we're also finding, is the square root of the variance. So to finish off, we're just going to take the square root of 7.4899. So the value of our standard deviation is around 2.7. Okay, there we go. It's pretty weird. It's something that you haven't done before, but once you do a couple of examples, you will start to sort of follow the pattern uh, by yourself, hopefully. Let's try another one. So example two, we have another probability distribution, outcomes across the top and probabilities across the bottom. One has been left unknown as the value of A. Okay, for this question, we're gonna find the values of A and then we're gonna find expected value and then we're gonna find variance. If you feel like you are confident with trying these by yourself, of course, as always, pause and see how you go. You having a go first will make the solution um, much more impactful. Okay, first step is to find the value of A. We have answered questions similar to this in previous videos. Um, we know that the sum of the outcomes of a probability distribution has to complete the sample space and give us an answer of one. So that means 0 0.3 plus A plus 0 0.1 plus 0.15 plus 0.2 is equal to one. Simplifying the left-hand side, we get A plus 0.75 is equal to one. So therefore A must be 0 0.25. Okay, there's the easy part done. Now we're going to find our expected value. Once again, taking our outcomes and multiplying them by their probabilities and adding them all together. We've done this many, many times before. Okay, this calculation gets us an answer of 5.7. Now to find the variance for the last step in the question, we need to once again find the expected, expected value of our outcomes squared. So we're going to put aside our expected value for now. We're going to now find the expected value squared. So it's the exact same calculation. Probabilities do not change, but our outcomes, which are the X values, are being squared once again. Okay, this calculation will get us 34.8. All right, so there is our EX squared is what we're gonna call it. Now we can apply our variance formula. So we're gonna do this number, 34.8, take away our expected value squared. So take away 5.7 squared. This gives us an answer for variance of 2.31. All right, on to the next example, example three. We have once again, another um, discrete probability distribution in the table below. We have all of our outcomes and all of our probabilities. So if you can hear that helicopter flying over, that's really annoying. Okay, part A, find the probability of X being greater than one, given that X is less than or equal to three. If this notation here is feeling super unfamiliar to you, you should go and watch my video on conditional probability. That's where this line comes from. So it means the probability of this happening, given that this has already happened. All right, so let's have a think. Given that we are less than or equal to three. So that means our outcome is gonna be either zero, one, two, or three. 
Okay, so we know our, our outcome is gonna be lying in one of these four values. So four is being excluded. It's gotta be three or below. Now, if we were choosing out of these ones, what is the probability we would be greater than one? Well, being greater than one could be the two or it could be the three. All right, so it's these two out of a total of four options. All right, so we're gonna have the probability of two and three is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2. Out of a total, it's not out of one because like I said, we're not including the four. Our total is this red box, which is 0 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.4 plus 0.2. So our total is 0 0.9. Calculating this, we get a value of two thirds. So there's a two in three chance that we are greater than one if we already know that we are less than or equal to three. Okay, now for part B, we are finding the standard deviation of the probability distribution. Hopefully you remember that standard deviation, like we did before, is the square root of the variance. So first thing we should do is find variance. And so to find variance, we need to find the expected value. So step one is finding our expected value, taking our outcomes, multiplying them by their probabilities and adding all the results. This gives us the number of two, nice and easy. So there's our expected value. Now we're going to again, repeat this process, but our outcomes, which are our X values, are going to be squared. So we're getting expectation of x squared. All right, this calculation gets us an answer of 5.2. Now we apply our variance formula. So we're gonna do 5.2 take away two squared. This will get us an answer of 1.2. So there is our variance. And to answer the question, which is to find the standard deviation, all we need to do is take the square root of 1.2 and we'll have our answer works out to be about 1.1. All right, beautiful. And to finish off with a challenge question, we have once again, another random variable X with a probability distribution. This time, all of our probabilities are in terms of P. Find an expression for variance of X in terms of P. Okay, so we could of course um, add together our three probabilities and set it equal to one and solve for P. However, this question is adding a bit of challenge to it by saying, no, 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 keep your answer in terms of P. So we're gonna need to do some algebra with this one. All right, so we're not finding the value of P, we are leaving it as P and then doing our calculations anyway. All right, if you're feeling confident, pause and have a go. Otherwise, I'm about to dive into it. All right, so variance, our first step, once again, is to find the expected outcome or the expected value, AKA the mean. Okay, so we're gonna take our outcomes, negative one, zero, and one. We're going to multiply these by our probabilities, p, 2p, and 1 minus 3p, and we're going to add them all together. Okay, so minus 1 times p, 0 times 2p, 1 times 1 minus 3p, add it all together. So the 0 is obviously going to vanish. We're going to have negative p at the front, and we're going to have 1 minus 3p on the end. Simplifying this gets us 1 minus 4p by grouping the p's together. All right, there is our expected value. We'll make note of that. And now we'll go ahead and we'll find the expected value squared once again. So same process, same formula, except our outcomes, our X values are being squared. So now instead of negative one times P, we have negative one squared, which is positive one times P gets us P. Zero squared is still zero, so that still vanishes. And then one squared is still one. So we have one minus three P on the end once again. Okay, so this one just became positive. The rest was all the same. Simplifying this and we get one minus two P if we group the P's together. All right, there's our expression for um, expected value squared. Now we're gonna apply our variance formula. So we're gonna do expectation of X squared, take away expected value squared. All right, so we have one minus two P, take away one minus four P all squared. All right, so we need to expand this second bracket using a perfect squares expansion. So we're gonna keep the brackets up for now because we don't wanna forget about the negative out the front. All right, so expanding these brackets, we've got one squared is one, one minus four P is minus eight P, and then we double that to get our middle term of negative eight P. And on the end, we have minus four P all squared, which is 16 P squared. All right, I've kept these brackets here because there's a negative out the front. So I've got to make sure that I remember to make everything inside times by negative one. So we're gonna get one minus two P minus one plus eight P minus 16 P squared. Simplifying this answer, the ones cancel out and eight P take away two P is six P. And there is your final answer. There is variance in terms of P. Awesome work if you got the same answer or if you are on the right track. 
All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll see you in our next lesson where we'll be starting the year 12 advanced maths course. How exciting. Cheers guys, bye.